Good morning. Now, am I to believe that my lawyers accidentally sent you an entire copy of my cell phone for the last two years? Ah. Yeah, I, I didn't think anyone could watch that many kitten videos, but that is uh, surprising <laughs> from you that you like... Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, please don't turn it over to the January 6th committee. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just subpoena it's it anyway. Boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, Carl, uh, this is indeed a good week, is it not, for truth, justice, I the mean, American way? I mean, you've got Schadenfreude TV happening with the Alex Jones trial. He's Schadenfreude, uh, and I said Schadenfreude because uh, Schadenfreude because I knew that Alex Jones would understand what I mean uh, in the original German. <laughs> That's um, how cooked his goose is. It's Schadenfreude. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Um, no. You've got the committee and everything else, and the legislation happening in the in Congress. So it's uh a lot to take in and be yeah. happy about it's a little weird i mean uh allison gill on muller she wrote said every state should put abortion on the ballot in november to get people out to vote um i think we talked about rules yesterday chris not mm -hmm. every state can but every state right. that can should right yeah because well and not just to get people to turn out to vote but because we need to protect it in our state constitutions right. and uh in through state legislatures across the country now yeah so uh if if they can't get it on this ballot they need to be working for the next one Chris Murphy raised an interesting point, of course. He said on Twitter, uh, mark my words, the anti-choice movement is going to look at the Kansas result and decide their best path to criminalize abortion is a federal ban. It's coming, and that's what's on the ballot this November. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they, look, they are not going to have the appetite, um, looking at the Kansas results, of doing that in place after place after place, knowing that most places in this country yeah. are more liberal than Kansas. Um, you know, because what happens is they will lose over and over and over again. Um, and that will demoralize their base. It will make it less likely for them to turn out and vote, but they can marshal resources to get a couple hundred Republicans in Congress to do the wrong thing, um, and be done with it. Yeah. And Carl, we were saying the way they messaged, you're a former political strategist, the way they messaged in Kansas, it, it is, I've been saying this every day here, it should be about freedom. That it's about right. government overreach and our freedom to love and marry who we want, to control our own bodies, uh, uh, freedom to vote, freedom, to, I mean, on and on, right? It's like the ad uh, Gavin yeah. Newsom put out out here. Well, when, yeah. And, when yeah, against somebody DeSantis, has a, yeah. When somebody has a spontaneous mm -hmm. abortion, uh, miscarriage, the last thing anybody should be thinking about is what role the government has to get into right. that conversation. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, it is about freedom, it's about autonomy. Um, it's about allowing people to do um, what's best for them and their families. Talk to us as a political strategist about Kansas, though, because I don't think people realize how extraordinary this was. That voter yeah. registration was up a thousand percent after Roe was overturned. Seventy percent of that women. Um, this was they thought they were being slick by putting it on a midterm election because there'd be low turnout. That's the only way right. Republicans ever plan on winning is if they can stop enough people from voting. So they thought, oh, it's a midterm. Democrats aren't really, you know, there's no reason really for them to turn out. People turned out yeah. specifically to vote against yeah, this sure in did. ruby red Kansas. They did. And you remember there was a book called uh, What's the Matter with Kansas? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think it takes on an entirely different new meaning now. Yeah. Um, you, you're looking at the, the resu results even closer. There's tremendous overlap between Republicans who voted in the primary for Republican candidates and people who voted against uh, removing choice from the Constitution. Yeah. So they better be careful because they're playing with fire. You know, Claire, and also, it's interesting, this whole, I mean, Alex Jones, it's just everything's like, it, to me, feels like a perfect storm because obviously J6 and DOJ immediately are, are going to get those those records, right? And yeah. it's all connected with January 6th. And his ex-wife. Peter Navarro's yeah. being sued by the Justice Department. Thank you, right, for allegedly using... Where is this familiar, a private email account for uh -huh. official White House business? Except, you know, first of all, Claire McCaskill says, I never want to hear another word about her emails from a group of people who are ignoring important government officials wiping their phones. I mean, right, right Pentagon, Homeland Security, Secret Service. Did anyone check and whether any every other department wiped their phones, or was it only the departments involved in the coup in trying to overthrow the, the United States government? Yeah, I feel like when we say wiping their phones it takes away from the gravity of what happened. They were destroying evidence. Right. Period. Right. And no one um, ever thought the, Hillary did that on purpose, 
right? I mean, you know what right. I mean? It's just the fact that she deleted risotto, mem- <laughs> you know, recipes yeah. or whatever. People, I think, forget in all of the heat and noise, Carl, to explain to people. Can you explain to people what that was? The whole butter emails that affected that whole election, right? It was- yeah, it was the culmination of 30 years of attacking Hillary Clinton as somebody that you can't trust. Right. Uh, billions of dollars spent by billionaire Republicans to undermine her credibility right. and the support she had. And whenever they laid off of her, her popularity would soar through the right. roof. Right. You know, people forget that. Right. Um, and so um, that's what the emails were about. Right. She, um, it was about buy- that and that alone. It was about undermine. It was about strengthening a narrative that they'd been establishing for 30 years. Right. And the fact and nobody, I think, in their right mind, thought she was deliberately right. releasing classified information. It was Republicans you know, was, knew she wasn't. Yeah. It was like, like what they would have being one or two with a small C classification or something. I mean, that that whole thing that an entire that we got this madman and his insurgent white supremacist army because of that stupid story. Right. And right. I don't I don't feel like the mainstream media is covering this with the importance that it has. Do you? Well, you know, my hope is that we end up getting something here yeah. uh, in terms of evidence. And, uh, you know, I'm not closing the door on that. We're certainly, you know. Who thought we'd have Alex Jones's text messages? Right. Um, you yeah. know, so I'm not closing the door on it. I think there will be something there. At the very least, they will now be able to bring people in to testify as to who told them to do what when. Yeah. Um, you know, if you follow the chain of events, you will be able to figure out who was responsible for every order to erase these phones. Yeah. Wait, guess the quote right in mid Carl Frisch interview. Who said you don't call in White House counsel and the deputy White House counsel unless you are looking squarely at Donald Trump? Stony Curtis. No, that was uh, Preet Bahara. Oh. Um, I think, again, that's a bigger deal than people realize, that this is both of yeah. the pats that, you know, uh, actually the Cassidy Hutchinson testified about. Yeah. So, you know, I think, I mean, I, I was going to say, I think the dam has broken. <laughs> now it's just a question of, uh, you know, time, because I think, I mean, all of this, Carl, is, it a, was a really bad day for Donald Trump yesterday. Yeah. It was a very bad day, and polling is, you know, rebounding for... Democrats across the country. We're seeing it already in the Senate. Uh, you know, Nate Silver's 538 now uh, for the first time this cycle is saying that Democrats are going to gain in the Senate um, or at least hold their majority. Um, and so, you know, I am optimistic, cautiously optimistic about our chances. And for a number of reasons. One, because we're learning more and more about what Republicans have been up to. And two, because Democrats are getting things done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, uh, they are a party of traitors. Can I just say that? U.S. Senate votes 95 to 1 to bring Finland and Sweden into NATO. The one no vote? Senator Josh Hawley, yep. of course. Right? One. Rand Paul. One single no vote. S- voted present. Yep. I, they're just well, traitors. In fairness, to the, you know, in fairness to Josh Hawley, he's very good friends with Boris and Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> so that would but, have been awkward. I mean, he is just, I, he is a traitor. He was the one, people don't, I don't think there's been enough about that as well. He was the one senator. Mm -hmm. They needed one senator to, to, you know, basically vote for insurrection, and he did it. Even though, you know, and Mitch McConnell warned against this too. Mm -hmm. Why why would you vote against our allies joining NATO? I mean, it's just, it's like the somebody, you know, tweeted, if only Rand Paul worked as hard for the people of Kentucky as he does for Putin. I mean, it's... (laughs) They're not really yeah. jokes anymore. Yeah. These are traitors to the United States, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, and we should be watching more and more of this. I, you know, I fear that the American people don't know what's at stake when we talk about NATO, unfortunately. Right. Um, I mean, Rand but, Paul uh, just basically accused our veterans of, like, faking asthma or yeah. something to get, I mean, I just, I, I, I yeah. they really are that awful. If, if they really are not concerned about burn pits, let's have them build one in the, the backyards of these uh, senators. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and Carl, in terms of, um, you know, we were talking about, like, what's going to motivate, again, putting on your political strategist hat in terms of messaging. What would what advice would you give Democrats now? Because it f- clearly feels like, and I know, again, we always say, like, a day, two days, it's a lifetime in, you know, electoral politics. Right. But this has been an amazing week, right, for They Biden, need to grab the Democrats. momentum. Yeah. They need to grab the momentum. It cannot just be about getting this bill across the finish line. They need to cheerlead around all of the different elements, right? Making corporations pay their pay their fair share, holding pharmaceutical companies accountable, um, you know, moving forward with uh, green initiatives and, and confronting the climate threat. 
All of those things need to be part of the messaging. And then they need to do more after that to keep the momentum going. You know, Biden can do something on student loans. There are a number of things that they can do to continue making this momentum uh, possible um, because this is what people are, have been waiting for. You look at the polling around Biden's popularity. His numbers are not low because Republicans and independents don't like him. His numbers are low because Democrats were frustrated that things were not, quote unquote, getting done. So now that they are getting done, yeah. these things, because Manchin was willing to play ball, they need to start talking about this everywhere they can. Yeah, I, by the way, wait, I just, uh, now that you said that, hang on, hold please, oh. let me, I gotta, who is this guy running against uh, uh, Nadler and Maloney? Who is this kid? I oh. just, uh, I, I was like, yay, hang on. Uh, the- Suraj uh, Patel? Yes. Yeah, I. Carl, this is what we just, Bob Seska said this yesterday, exactly what you're saying, that it's because Democrats abandon their leader when they get scared. Like, oh, his polling is bad. Oh, maybe he's too old. Uh, you know, and that's exactly what you're seeing in the polling, whereas Donald Trump can commit, apparently, how many crimes, Chris? 11 billion. And they stick, I, I, right? I mean, it, it's, but this guy, I just, I, okay. I like, I mean, I Matt Nadler's done a great job, too. I just, I'm not, but this I just thought was refreshing. Democratic congressional candidate Siraj Patel torched rivals uh, Jerry Nadler and Carolyn Maloney for throwing Biden under the bus by refusing to say he should run for re-election. They had a, a debate, and mm-hmm. neither, they, you know, Maloney or Nadler would say, yeah. yes, Biden should run again and we're for him. And he said all they did was do something... All they did was do something very self-serving. They saw polling numbers or some absurd Washington Examiner type headline that said young young people don't want Biden to run for office. And they threw their president under the bus, which is a bunch of malarkey. Fact of the matter is Joe Biden was the only one capable of beating Donald Trump. And he did. In the first two years, he will, after the climate bill, be the most accomplished president since LBJ. As commander in chief, he has put Putin in a box. So my question to the chairs, House Oversight and Judiciary is, what in the heck are you thinking, giving Republicans talking points and ammo and frankly, making an ageist argument against your own president only one person should decide whether they should want to run for president and that is joseph biden i i found this really refreshing and he's young and he said i'm going to tell you uh that the fact of the matter is that they think maybe they can pull younger voters away from me by throwing their president under the bus the the exact type of triangulation and calculus that gets democrats in this circular firing squad at all times people are done with this culture of defeatism in washington dc from democrats we should be celebrating accomplishments and we should be fixing people's lives wow i mean i don't know if this kid's gonna win but you know Against two really big household names, yes. probably not. But right. that's a great message. But it's yeah. a great point. You never it? know. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, look, I think it comes down to results. As long as Democrats deliver on some of their promises, people will come around. Yeah. Um, people wanted change. First, they wanted Trump out of the way. They wanted Trump gone. Biden did that the day he was sworn in, yeah. right? Um, and then they wanted other things, too. And this bill will go a long way towards delivering on, on some of those things. I think that's critical. I think you're going to see young people uh, coming alive again um, when these climate initiatives are are put through. Uh, And he can finish the deal with some some work on student loans. Uh, He doesn't have to go all the way necessarily, um, but he's got to do something. Yep. Absolutely. Carl, great stuff as always. Yes. I will see you next week. Oh, thank you. There he goes. Carl right. Frisch. Hey, Carl. By the way, Carl Frisch opening the show at Sexy Liberal DC, <laughs> September 10th. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait.